is some absolutely gorgeous light starting. The only destruction I have not start with that is the ubiquitous contrails. Anyway, so I've decided on a very simple photograph. All I've done is, can you see it? Oh, yep, stand in the water. I've just composed the photograph so the rock just there is absolutely dominating the scene. I've got in as close as I can without cutting off the rock and by leaving just enough space around it not to make it feel uncomfortable. I've come back as far as I, I possibly can and zoomed in as far as I can just to try to bring the Langdales forward. I think the Langdale's absolutely glorious. You can always tell there's going to be some colour. The good thing about contrails is when they change colour, oh, there's more, there's more. It's a plane, the underside of the plane is really popping and pink, so you know something's going to happen. I've taken a panorama, but it didn't quite work on this occasion. There's me allowing them to get up, it's glorious. Again, at four seconds, I'm getting some nice calmness on the water. And right at the base, we're back at the very far end of just, let's have a look, just around there, you've got some geese. Right in the valley, right in the dip. Special. I'm trying my damnedest to slow down today. Gotta to keep saying to myself, I've got four days here, three days here. Yeah, that's a cracking rock. As I said, the actual tan itself is much fuller than it usually is. And as a consequence, the actual feel of the place, the actual feel of the place is very different. The fence over there is much more submerged and a lot of the rocks that you could use to lead you further into the sea are submerged but it works well with this one. I've managed to take it in such a way that all these all these rocks here are excluded and I've just got that single rock there. Considering I'm doing a long exposure I may do a panorama from there just to see what it's like I'm thinking a square format but I'm going to be daring but as daring as photographers can be and plonk it right in the middle because as you can see I've put the weather well, I've, I've put the rock the rock is right in the valley right in the valley so it works well with the Langdales in the back if they're not the Langdales I'm going to sound like a light plonker so you've got the large rock there which works well with the Langdales in the background and it fits well into the arch. Yeah, let's do it. See ya. Morning again. Well, I've never known Blay Town be so changeable. The wind was quite gusty. The colour was nice. Not too much but enough. Nice cloud movement. The wind is now calmed down. It's really really boggy. Just on the bank leading down to the tarn and as I was looking in awe at, at that the geese took flight circled around the tarn slowed down and flew right over I got it on my phone I'll probably pop it on the screen this
wheels have gone, which is excellent. One thing I haven't done is stop. And now I stop. I can hear the birds in the trees. And these, it's these small things. Because this is more. As it says, as the car comes down, this is more than the visual. It's the audible as well that adds to the scene. Yeah, this remains my favourite town. It's quite busy at popular times of the year because the car park is five minutes away. But this time of year, on a Thursday morning, sunrise to myself. Absolutely wonderful. So I've taken photographs, if you can see, of that rock there. I've taken photographs of this one here as well. Not one I would usually take because I got quite close. I zoomed in, I really filled the frame. That rock there is just poking into the side, so I may have to clone that out. No problem with doing that. Got the polarizer on. I got the three stop hard rod. And I popped in the six stop as well. The reason I wouldn't have usually composed as I would is because of the orientation of this rock it's vertical so it does act as a barrier if you like creating a closed door to the scene but it's nice, I got really close in, filled the frame, and what I've done this morning, and I've not usually done this, is I have made the foreground interest, the foreground rocks, absolutely dominate the scene. And it's not something that I would usually do, and it's not something that would usually work, I don't believe. Because what you want is something in the foreground to lead you into the scene, to create a story. So you've got your start, you've got your middle, and you've got your ending. What I've done, I've actually created a massive start and a tiny ending. So what happens is wherever that should be the dominating factor, the dominating part of the photograph, this becomes the dominating factor. Glorious. Now, what to do next? Well, I'm not rushing, even though my feet are wet through. Well, is in my car. Should have gone for him. It had taken five minutes. Not an awful lot of light hitting the sides of the trees. But when the but when the wind slows down, you get some lovely reflections of the trees. Tiny bit of mist just over the brow. That is glorious. What I would like. I would like the wind to calm right down. I wonder, don't fall in, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. There's a nice little rock just there. I wonder, no, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work, there's just too much water. Too much water. Glorious. Right. Why didn't I put my bloody wellies on?
Not a bad little tan. Not a bad little tan at all. <laughs> 